Hey guys, it's Generic. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Code.org Sprite Lab to make a simple chase style game. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is open up your Code.org account and go up on the right hand corner next to your name and click Create and choose Sprite Lab. Once that opens, you'll see that you're, you're already started with two blocks. Um, one of which is a sprite, which is this bunny, and the when run, which is attached to. And we're just going to keep that bunny as our main character. We're going to make it so that he can chase around some fruits and vegetables and a little cupcake and get points when he touches the fruits and vegetables. And when the player reaches a certain score, they receive like a way to go, you won type screen. So first things first, let's go to world and get this set background and go ahead and set our background to the one we want for our title screen. We go down here to more, and I'm gonna scroll down a bit until we get to the grassy hill looking one, this one. And once I've chosen that, I can come back up to my drop down menu and it will appear here with some of the other most commonly used ones. So now we have that background. I'm also gonna to go to text and get this show title screen put it underneath and add in a title and a subtitle. So I'm just going to call it you know, bunny chase. And then I'm also going to go up here and rename it bunny chase. And in my subtitle, I'm just going to put by generic. Subtitle will always be printed more towards the bottom and in a smaller font, and the actual title will be up here. I have found no way to be able to change the color or the outline or the font or where they appear on the screen. The only other way there really is to make text is to use this print, which we'll use in a little while for our score, and that prints it in a white box at the top. So I find that I use title and subtitle for a lot of things if I want them to appear in the middle, even if they're not the title. Let's go ahead and leave that up for about three seconds. And we're going to go get this events block that says at three seconds and start putting everything else under that. So that way, this background, these words, and this bunny will show up at those coordinates. And then at about three seconds, everything else that we do under here will happen. Hope that makes sense. If I'm going too quickly for you, and I realize I probably am for those of you who are new to this, um, please pause the video, copy what I'm doing, or make your own choices for similar things for your game, and then restart the video. I'm not gonna pause and wait while you guys get the blocks though, because obviously I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna take you to do that. So at three seconds, I'm gonna go back into text, and I'm gonna get this hide title screen. That way at the three second mark, it will hide these words that say bunny chase by generic. I'm going to then have some other uh, sprites show up. So I'm going to get this make new sprite. And code.org isn't particularly good at letting you copy blocks or code. But once you have one on your screen, most of the time you cannot right click and get it to copy, but you can do a control C and a control V in a Windows environment. It doesn't always work with command C and command V in others in other environments, or it doesn't always work on a Mac, but you can sometimes copy them um, if you are on a Windows machine. So in any case, I'm going to add three of those. And I'm going to make one of them a carrot. I'm going to make one of them a apple, and I'm going to make one of them a cupcake. And that's what we're going to start with for the three items that we're going to let our bunny chase around to try to earn some points. I'm also going to go in here to the X, Y coordinates and click this pin and tell it I want the carrot to be up here. It's not showing up currently because it hasn't been three seconds and it's not running. I want the apple to start here and I want the cupcake to start down here. And you might notice it starts at 200, 200 automatically like the bunny did which is pretty much the center of our screen or our playing area. But when you click on this little pin, 
and take your character to wherever you want. For example, let's say we wanted the bunny up over here instead. It will automatically give you those X, Y coordinates that appear on the screen. So right now that's X for 99 and Y, which is 290. So actually it's funny I say that. It must have been off a tiny bit because it says 94 and 302, but it usually goes automatically. I must have just accidentally moved the mouse a tiny bit. I'm going to turn those back to 200, 200 though, because that's where I want it to start or close to anyway. I want it to look like it's kind of standing on that hill. Actually, maybe we'll make it stand on this darker hill. There we go. So we'll start it there and you can see it automatically puts the X and Y coordinates in there. For those of you who may have used Scratch, um, Scratch and actually most other websites that teach Blockly based coding have zero, zero as the coordinates for the middle and then the four quadrants, similarly to what you would have if you were graphing an equation. For some reason, code.org does not. It has zero, zero in the bottom left-hand corner and there are no negatives. And so this is just the top right quadrant. I don't really know why it's that way, but 200, 200 is about in the middle. Over here is about is 400, 400, and 0, 0 is down there. All right, so back to this. We are now going to, after three seconds, have our title screen disappear and have a carrot, an apple, and a cupcake show up. I'm going to go ahead and run that and show you what it looks like. I happen to know that the carrot is going to be, yeah, a little too big. The apple is going to be a little too big, and the cupcake is gigantic. So I would like those a little smaller. So I'm going to go back in here to sprites and get this set characters size two block. I'm actually going to get three of them. I'm going to leave the bunny the size it is, but I'm going to get three of these set size blocks for the three foods. And I'm going to make the carrot and the orange a tiny bit smaller. I mean, excuse me, apple, carrot and the apple. They're both at 50 is their size right now. Now 50 what? I'm not sure because it never actually tells us. I'm going to send them down to 45. And then I'm going to make that cupcake quite a bit smaller. So I'm going to get the set size too, and I'm going to send that all the way down to probably 35 or 40. Let's try 40 and see how it looks. Let's go ahead and reset and run our code again. Hmm, that does not look any smaller at all to me. What is the problem? That is awfully strange because I already made this game once to show my students live in class and it worked just fine. So I'm not sure what I'm goofing up. If you see something that I'm goofing up, please leave it in the comments down below. Oh, psh, never mind. I see what I'm goofing up. You don't need to bother leaving it in the comments, although feel free to say something if you're the one who noticed it. I forgot to change these. I'm changing the size of the bunny over and over. I want that one to be a carrot this one to be an apple, and this one to be a cupcake. Otherwise, I'm just telling it to change the size of the bunny. Now let's try this again. So wait three seconds, much better. So now we have a nice tiny, I'll make it a little bigger so you can see, um, a nice tiny carrot and apple. It'll be a little harder to catch and a smaller cupcake that's a little more in line with the apple and the carrot. I think I might even make it a tiny bit smaller. Let's go ahead and make it 35. It'll be a little bit more in line with the apple. All right, so now we've done that. Another thing that we need to do is set a score and make it so that every time the bunny touches the carrot or the apple, it gets some points. And when it touches the cupcake, we might actually have it take away some points or maybe just do nothing. So let me show you variables. If you're unfamiliar with variables, I suggest that you work on the code.org express course 2021, some of the higher lessons like 20, 21, 22, which introduce variables. Um, so I'm just going to go really quickly, assuming you already know what they are. You start off here with this change counter by, and I'm going to click the drop down box for counter, and I'm going to rename this variable score. Oops, typing with one hand, I'm messing up. All right, and now I'm gonna go back into variables and you'll see that you now have this set score down here as opposed to change counter and set counter. You now have this block score and set score. 
I'm going to start the game off by setting the score to zero. And then I'm going to make it so that every time you touch the carrot or the apple, like I was saying, the score goes up by one. Let's go ahead and ditch this. Well, yeah, we'll ditch it because we're going to get it back in a minute. So there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. First, we need to make it so that the bunny and the food can move around. So which one should we do first? You know what? I think I'm just going to do. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do the bunny first. So there are multiple ways, like I said, that you can do that. You can get this sprite begins and tell it which sprite and tell it what to do. Be draggable, drive with the arrow keys, fluttering, growing, all these things. This is what we're going to use to make the fruit and the vegetables, the carrot and the apple automatically move around. So maybe I'll just go ahead and get three of those. We got three wandering. And then I can go, oh, sorry, back up into behaviors up here though, and get Sprite begins. I'm going to make one for the carrot. This time I will remember to change it to say carrot. There we go. I'm going to go and get another one for the apple and make it so that that one starts going by itself. And again, don't forget to change your bunny to the apple. And I'm going to do the cupcake. So after we've set the size there, I'm going to make the cupcake wander around. So let's see what those look like. After three seconds, they should show up and just start kind of wandering around the screen by themselves. If you want to change how they wander, you could click edit and make changes in here to the code that's associated with that sprite. I would not suggest doing that unless you are pretty familiar with code.org. Um, if you are, though, feel free. You can change the speed. You can change all kinds of things. You're not going to break it. Um, as I usually say, as long as you're not pouring water on the computer or smashing it with a hammer, it's not going to break it try something out and see how it works. But I wouldn't do it on your game that you're already halfway through. I would open up a new um, Sprite Lab to do that on and kind of see how those work. But once you know how they work, feel free to edit your behaviors all you want. We're going to use the default wandering so that we have a carrot. Its size is set, and it's just kind of wandering around the screen. Same thing for the apple, and same thing for the cupcake, except just like with size, I accidentally forgot to tell it to do it for the cupcake and it still said bunny. There we go. So now we have those three wandering around. I, I want to go back up here and instead of just having the title screen change from this to this, I want to actually change the whole backdrop too. So I'm going to get this set background too. And I'm going to pick the rainbow one. So after three seconds, the background should change also, and they should start wandering around. We'll check that in a second, but there's one more thing that I want to add, which is to make the bunny move. Again, just like with the wandering apple, carrot, and cupcake, there are a lot of different ways to make the bunny move. You can use letter keys. You could use arrow keys. You could have these arrows down here work. There's even a behavior in here that says you could make Sprite begins driving with arrow keys. I will tell you though, that usually works for up and down, I believe it is. Well, let's just try it. Up and down, but I think it's left and right that it makes it turn instead, unless you go in and edit the behavior. So let's look at what it does. Sprite begins driving with arrow keys. So That one's not working. So right now up is making it go right. Down is making it go left. Left is making it turn to the left and right is making it turn to the right. And like I said, you can go into edit and change those, but I actually think it's a little stronger code wise. Um, a little, I don't really know what the word is I'm looking for here, but um, it's better practice to go in and tell it up, down, left, and right exactly what you want it to do. 
So I'm going to do that by going into Sprite right here, or Sprites, excuse me, and get four of these. Move 10 pixels north, and we're going to make one for left, one for right, one for up, one for down. So there's two, and again, you can right click or control C depending and control V depending on the um, type of computer that you're on. I sadly cannot do that on this computer. <laughs> it would have been useful if I could. And as anybody who's watched some of my videos before knows that my trackpad is kind of on the way out. And my computer overheats quite a bit. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, I will have gotten a new computer and it won't be a problem for future videos. So now that we have four of those, we're going to change them to the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. And we're going to make it so that those happen using the arrow keys. You could also use WASD if you wanted. You could use anything you want, one, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go in here to events and get when up pressed, make it go north. When down pressed, make it go south. When left pressed, make it go west. And then when east press, or sorry, when right pressed, make it go east. All right, so we now have up, down, left, and right. I usually like to put them in that order, so I am going to do that really quickly just because that's kind of what my brain is used to. So we have up, down, left, and right, and those are all set to bunny, so we should be able to move the bunny. We're going to test those out. We're also going to test out our new backdrop and make sure that switches. So let's do that. That was the last thing that we changed before the up, down, left, and right. All right, background changed, look good, or looks good, excuse me. Up works, down works, left works, and right works. I'm not sure if you guys can hear or not, but I'm having to hit up like over and over, up, 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 up. That's because we have when up pressed so that it will go one space at a time or 10 pixels at a time. If you want it to continue going up while you hold down the up key or continue going down, you can change this when to while. When does it once, while does it continuously. So while you're holding down the down arrow, it's going to keep going down. It's going to keep going south. So let me show you the difference with that. And then I'm going to leave them on while because that's actually what I want. Let me reset it. That's why I only made it a three second intro so you didn't have to sit here and wait through the intro a million times. And we're actually almost done with our game, believe it or not. So we can now go up, down, left, and right. Now all we have to do is make it so that when it touches the food, it gives a score and the score shows up on the screen and eventually it says you won or you win when you get the correct score and we'll be done. Easy peasy. Let's scroll back up and review what we have. We have set score to zero, but it's not showing up yet. We're going to go to text and get this print block and take out this. If we put in like high, it would print high at the top of the screen here. Let's just see that for a minute. I'm just going to, as I usually say, gem on the keys for a second, just put some random letters in there. And you can see they pop up here in this white box at the top on the left. Instead, we are going to go back to variables and get this block that says score. And so now that the score is set to zero in the beginning, it's going to print that score zero up here in the top left corner when we run it. We're also going to go down here and add a few blocks so that anytime, um, shoot, now I forgot when that, where that block is. Yep, I guess I didn't. In events, anytime the bunny touches the carrot or the apple or the cupcake, we're going to make it so that the score goes up. So let's start with when bunny touches carrot, go back in here to variables, 
and get this change score by one. Change it from counter to score. That's the variable we made. And then you're going to get the same exact thing out of variables two more times. When bunny touches apple, change score by one. And when, he, when bunny touches carrot, I mean, sorry, cupcake, we might even have it do negative one. Now, to be honest, I haven't ever tried to do negatives before. I can't remember having done it anyway. If I did, I don't, I don't know what happened. So I'm not sure if negative works on the scores, but we're going to test it out. And if it doesn't, we can always change it. So let's move these down and get some room for these blocks and finish our cupcake variables change score by negative one. Let's see what that does. Like I said, not sure if it'll work or not, but why not try it? And then we're also going to go and put that same print block on all of those so that when the score changes, it reprints it. It doesn't just stay zero up here. Okay. So get three of those from the text category. See, this is where a copy would be much easier, but I don't have that option. Hopefully you do, so you could go a little faster. And then we go back to variables and we get print score. So the score is always in the background at zero and the score is always in the background going up as the bunny touches the carrots or the apples or the cupcakes going down, but we can't see it unless we go in here and tell it to reprint that score. The score doesn't automatically stay up in the corner. Okay. So now when it touches the carrot, it should go up by one and we should be able to see it. When it touches the apple, it should go up by one. We should be able to see it. And when it touches the cupcake, it should go down by one and we should be able to see it. So let's play our game, see if it works. So it's zero in the beginning. We're waiting our three seconds. Our arrows work. Oh my, I touched the apple and the carrot at the same time. And you can see the score is going up on the screen. Let's see if negative works. No. Oh, it does. Look, it went from seven to six. Uh, I was all excited. So that does work. All right. So let me just go after the fruits we're supposed to be going after or the vegetables. And if we can get it to 10, which it seems like is possible, I'm going to make it print a yay you won way to go type of thing and then our game's done i might even add a little sound actually for the way to go we'll see if we can find like a trumpet or you know do 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 something exciting or some jingling little bells or something so let's do that there's one tricky little part to this i'm just trying to make room to move these over here i like to have all my code in one line so that you guys can kind of see it but code.org is not the best at letting you move blocks around, unfortunately. I feel like a lot of times I kind of bash on code.org and I prefer Scratch. I do love Scratch. I think Scratch is much more user friendly, but I think you have to know what you're doing or be willing to just jump right in and figure it out. Whereas code.org has all the nice lessons that will kind of walk you through stuff. So they both serve their purposes. All right. So like I said, we're going to make it so that we're going to go down here to logic. And we're going to get this if block. And we're going to make it so that if the score equals 10. So let's go to math and get one of those numbers. If the score equals 10, then we're going to have a bunch of stuff happen. I'm going to have, and we're just going to go attach this in a few different places in a minute. So if the score equals 10, I'm going to have Let's see a sound play. So we'll go up here to world. We'll get play sound. Put that in there. We'll go to the choose drop down box. And for some reason you have to click the drop down and then click choose again. I don't know why you have to click it twice. It seems redundant to me. And then you have all these sounds that you can choose from. Um, let's see if there's a voiceover that just says like way to go or something. There's correct. Oh, there's congratulations. Let's try that one. Congratulations. Ah, it's kind of cheesy, but it'll work. There's also some numbers on here. 
Oh, here, here's you win. Let's try that instead. You win. Actually, why don't we use them both? So let's use congratulations and we'll choose it. So that should be on there. And then let's try doing another one and do you win. I'm not positive it'll it positive if it will play all of the first song uh, first sound before it plays the second sound, but I guess we'll figure it out. I'm choosing female voiceovers because you know I have a female voice, or I'd like to think I do since I identify as a female. All right. So if the score equals ten, it's going to try to play those two sounds. Like I said, I've never tried two before. Let's make sure it works in a minute. I'm also going to have the background change again. Let's change it to, I don't know, something kind of celebratory or maybe just a plain backdrop where we can say you won. Something where a bunny would still be, or like I said, a plain one. I mean, that's kind of cute. Not really sure why there's a rock floating in the middle of space, kind of. I was hoping to find something with like some balloons or something like that. If you see anything, I would say yell, but you know, it's one of the bad things about YouTube. You have to comment down below. I will not be able to hear you. Let's just use this nice little spring picture right here. All right. So it's going to change the backdrop to that little sunny spring picture. I'm also going to have it make these three disappear the carrot, the apple, and the cupcake, and go back to just having the bunny. So let's go up here to Sprite, and I will get three of those. Remove carrot, remove apple, and remove cupcake. It's kind of crazy how, even though this is a very simple game, how much work goes into it. Imagine when you play you know, a more complex game. You play something like Call of Duty or Fallout or anything, even something that's a little simpler like Among Us or Clash Royale. There's still an insane amount of coding behind that. I think it's interesting. All right, so it's gonna remove all three of those. It's still gonna have the bunny. I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole chunk. Sorry. I would edit that out, but I was really hoping to do this in one take and not have to edit. The bizarre noise you may or may not hear behind me is my dog who had surgery and he has a cone on and he's trying to scratch his head through the plastic of the cone. <laughs> if you want to watch some of my other videos, you can see which one I'm talking about. I'm talking about Iggy Pup. He is the black and brown dog. He's about three years old. He had to have knee surgery. All right. You didn't come here to hear about Iggy though. You came here to learn to code. So let's go ahead and attach this to the carrot, maybe, come on. So the way this is going to work, it, in my mind, you should just be able to detach all that up here to when run. And at any time, if the score equals 10, it should all happen. But it doesn't work that way. For code.org, and I'm assuming that's because it's JavaScript based, which if you didn't know, you can click show code. And here's the JavaScript behind the scenes, sort of for our game so far, there's quite a lot of it. Um, I'm guessing it's because in JavaScript, that's how this has to be done. I'm not, I know a little JavaScript, but not quite enough to tell you that that's exactly why there could be another reason that I'm missing, but I'm pretty sure that's it. So we're gonna have to take all that code that we made, all this if code and attach it underneath the when bunny touches carrot, when bunny touches apple and when bunny touches cupcake. Actually, maybe not cupcake because cupcake's never going to be the thing that makes you win. So we might not have to do that, actually. But come on, attach. There we go. Let's just move this out of the way. Code.org is getting a little laggy or my internet, but it's probably code.org or my computer. So now when we click run, once the score equals 10 and the carrot is being touched, it should broadcast that other screen. So let's see, I'm going to try to really avoid this cupcake so we can get to it faster. We're at six. Ah, go away, cupcake. Seven, eight, nine. 
Now we want our last one for 10 to be the carrot. Whoa. Well, that answered that question. Apparently it does say you win and congratulations at the same time. So we are going to want to go in and take out one of those. Let me do that before I forget. I guess I'm just going to leave the you win. Let's move this apple back here before we lose it. Uh-oh. Speaking you know, of losing, what happened to my cupcake? Oh my goodness. It somehow put it way down here. See how this, on the right, there's this uh, draggable bar now? Didn't used to be there. Come on, Code. We need you over here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take out this congratulations. We'll just put in the you win since it played it at the same time, and that was super confusing, and I don't really want to mess with separating them out since this is supposed to be a simple game, but that did win. And then all three of these disappeared. Our bunny stayed there. I might want to make the bunny go back in the middle, but it's not, you know, necessary. And then the cupcake is never going to be what makes it win. So we don't need to add that there. All we need to do is go back in, copy all of this and add it onto the apple. So give me a sec. I'm going to do that and I will be right back. All right, so now I've copied all the same code for in the if that I had on the carrot to the apple. Let's go ahead and reset it. Make sure it works no matter whether we touch the carrot or the apple as our 10th point. All I have to do is run around, avoid the cupcake. We're also testing to make sure that the sound actually says congratulations now and not you are says you won and not congratulations and you won at the same time. One more point. Come on, carrot. Ta -da! There we go, except the apple did not remove itself. Not really sure why that happened. When apple touches apple, remove apple. Hey, apple, you're supposed to be removed. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to have to work on that one. Not exactly sure why that's happening. I'm guessing, though, that there might be a little bit of code that's conflicting that's way down here. When my computer kind of spazzed out and it put everything down there. But otherwise, our game works just fine. So there's just a tiny little bit of troubleshooting we need to do, and we're done. Once you're finished with your game, in order to share it um, with yourself or your friends or to turn it in if you're doing this for um, a college or a high school class, or even a middle school or an elementary school class, which, by the way, if you're in middle school or elementary school and you're doing stuff this complex, good job. Um, you can click Share, and then it will give you a link. You can send it to a phone. Obviously, you are providing them with your phone number. I've done it before and never been sent anything from code.org. They are a legit nonprofit educational organization, but use your best judgment. You could just copy and paste it in something and open it in your web browser. If you do that, it looks. Actually, never mind. Can't show you what it looks like because we are only looking at the one tab on my screen, which I kind of forgot. All right, this video is already a little bit longer than I had intended. That's all the things that are required just to make this very simple little chase game. Like I said, imagine if you're making some huge console game and the amount of coding that goes into it. And especially since this is a Blockly based language, the amount of JavaScript that goes into this thing you have just made, which is kind of mind boggling, but you in fact coded all of this. You just did not write the letters out and the numbers and the characters. You, oh, that scared me for a minute. See how all my code is gone? Um, you did it using this blockly based object oriented um, coding, but it is still coding and you should congratulate yourselves. And if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments or suggestions. If there's a certain type of game you want me to teach you how to do in code.org, I'm also going to start posting some little tutorials and how to's for scratch.mit.edu. So if there's anything on there specifically that you want me to show you how to do, put it in the comments as well. And otherwise, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.